for joining us today. As a reminder, we are, uh, we're filming this and it's gonna run on Channel 10 and YouTube and the radio station as well uh, for the remainder of the year. So, um, so some of our messages today uh, will be focused on year-round preparation, but uh, thank you for all the people who came out today and who are participating. Uh, we're gonna start this presentation that uh, we have, a, we have uh, presentations from the Sheriff's Department, the Fire Department, Supervisor Levere's office and CERT and from the City of Ojai. So we're gonna start these presentations with a, a presentation and an introduction from Mayor, Mayor Betsy Sticks. So she will be our first speaker and uh, she will be, our, if you could join me in uh, giving a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, James. Can you all hear me? Good? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We all know that it's all about showing up. Showing up for ourselves, our families, our friends, our neighbors, and our community. I'm grateful to City Manager James Vega, thank you, James, and Ojai City staff, thank you, staff, for making this event happen, and to County Supervisor Matt Levere. Hi, Matt, thank you. CERT leader Brian Brennan, thank you Brian. Ventura County Public Information Officer Scott Del Torre, thank you Scott. Uh, Ojai Police Chief Jose Rivera, thank you Chief. And the crew, Jennifer Berry, thank you for doing the work on the ground. And for, col yay, all right crew. <laughs> and for collaborating, coordinating, and sharing information with our city. It's all about teamwork. As you can all feel from the weather, fire season is upon us early this year. We will be ready for the next emergency. I've been working closely with Celine Mumi, pre-fire specialist for the Ventura County Wildland Division, and Bob Roper, former Ventura County Fire Chief, to assist our town in coordinating all the involved entities. We're here today to encourage everyone in Ojai to prepare for our next emergency by following the methodology of our Ready, Set, Go program. The first step is communication. It's so vital. Please welcome our city manager, James Vega, to outline the city's emergency communication. Thank you. And let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Thank you. So as I, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, one of our big focuses for uh, the last couple years and for this year coming forward is going to be on communication and getting critical information out to the community. Uh, one of uh, some of the tools we are using to do that are tools that have been around a long time, but I think we forget about them and, and they uh, we haven't uh, maybe used them as much as we should have in the past, but. Tools like our uh, TV channel, Channel 10, our YouTube page, our um, website, uh, VC Alert, and the new uh, just launched by Ojai app on the smartphone. And so I want to give a little bit of information about those. And uh, the, this presentation also, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, is going to be aired on all of those throughout the year so that people year round can. Uh, hear these presentations and keep emergency preparation on their minds. Uh, as, as Mayor Sticks noted, uh, fire season uh, used to start, I think it was in October of each year, and I think as we saw the last week, uh, fire season is year-round now, and uh, you know, the fire weather uh, has already come to Ojai this year. And that's not the only emergency that we have to prepare for. We have to prepare for uh, for floods, uh, landslides, uh, earthquakes, and other emergencies. So I wanted to start uh, with talking a little bit about what the city does in emergencies. Uh, I think everybody knows uh, fire and, and police uh, have critical roles during emergencies, and I think people know what those roles are, but as far as the city goes, uh, we have um, some different roles that we play, and some of the roles that we do is Depending on the emergency, we'll coordinate road closures, we'll clear obstacles from roads, we'll inspect buildings for damages after earthquakes. But a key role that the city plays during every emergency is communication and getting accurate information out to the community. I think 
during the Thomas fire, everybody experienced in some form un, uh, not accurate information, inaccurate information. Uh, I think there were so many rumors that went around during the Thomas fire. I know I, I saw one night that the people were posting that the Johnny Cash house had burned down and was gone, which it, it did not and it, it didn't burn down. Uh, we had heard that the arcade had burnt down, it did not burn down. And so a key focus for us is trying to get people prepared by telling people where to go for accurate information uh, during an emergency so that when the next fire happens, you're not worrying and hearing about these rumors that are, that are not true. And so for us, uh, we want people to get prepared now. So what, what, what can you do now for the next emergency? You could sign up for VC Alert. I think that's probably the, the best, most critical tool. Uh, a lot of people have signed up for VC Alert in the past, uh, but if you've moved, you should go back on and re-register so you're getting accurate information for your location. Uh, just as a reminder, VC Alert is the system that sends you text messages directly from the Ventura County Office of Emergency Services. So when an emergency happens, you're hearing about it uh, as soon as possible and before anybody else's. You can sign up for VC Alert now by going to readyventuracounty.org. Uh, additionally, we just wanted to uh, note that's the Ventura County system here in Ojai. We uh, use several sources to get out really quick, accurate information, including our uh, website, which has a new address, ojai.ca.gov. And uh, we have a news feed on that website that shows uh, updated information and will be used during emergencies. We also have a, an official City of Ojai Facebook page at facebook.com backslash City of Ojai. We post a lot of information. People might have actually gotten sick of it during COVID. We had so much information posted there, maybe, uh, maybe too much, but uh, our, our goal will be to post accurate information there. And then as I mentioned a moment ago, we launched last week My Ojai, uh, the My Ojai smartphone app for iPhones and Androids. And you can uh, not only use that to submit code compliance issues or other issues in the city, but during an emergency, we can actually send a, a push notification to your phone so you're getting information from us as well that way. So a big, uh, a big role we play is on communication, and we wanted to just kind of get people thinking about um, where they're going to get information when you, know, when you hear the, the sirens or you hear... Uh, you know, um, what you think is an emergency, where you can look to get that accurate information. Uh, one other thing we wanted to do, since this is Emergency Preparedness Day, is just to remind everybody to uh, what our goal is today, which is to get everybody to think and be prepared for the next emergency. Um, during the Thomas fire, I think we all saw the gas stations had lines down the street because everybody needed gas to get out of the valley. Uh, and one tip that uh, we learned and we, we keep reminding people because the old habits come back is keep a half a tank of gas in your car at all times. Or if you have an electric car, keep, keep a charge so you can evacuate if you need to. And then we have here uh, as an, another example, we have an evacuation bag, which is another thing people could do to get prepared and we'll open it up. Uh, we have some flashlights, to, some City of Ojai flashlights to give away, so we'll op open up that emergency bag and we'll have flashlights for anybody who wants to come by after the presentations. But some important documents you may want to think about and have prepared uh, for an emergency is things like medication, um, passports, uh, you should know where uh, your passports, your driver's licenses are, and uh, be prepared and start thinking about the things you'll need uh, when you do get that 10, 10 minute or 15 minute notice that, you know, that we're going to look at evacuating. Um, so uh, with that, we'll, like I said, we'll have all that up, but um, for the, at the end of the presentations, but if you could uh, join me in welcoming our next speaker, which is Supervisor Matt Levere. Thank you, uh, City Manager Vega. Do you mind if I yeah, thank you, City Manager Vega, Mayor Sticks, uh, Council Member Francina. Uh, honored to be here today as we deal with such an important issue. Um, having grown up in the Ojai Valley, uh, I know that it's true what they say, that this place is truly Shangri-La. Uh, but with that majestic beauty really comes immense challenges when it comes to managing uh, the natural resources uh, that surround us. 
in the past 15 years, the residents of the valley have had to deal with so much, from fires to floods to earthquakes uh, to mudslides. And I think most recently with the Thomas fire, uh, one of the lessons that it truly taught us was the importance of being prepared uh, in the face uh, of natural disasters and emergencies. And here in the valley and in the county, we are blessed to have world-class first responders. Our, our Ventura County Fire Department, our Ventura County uh, Sheriff's Department, who work so hard and so bravely to protect us in these situations. Uh, but with that, we also as a community have a role to play. And you know, the question I ask all of you and I ask myself a lot is, do you know what to do if an emergency strikes your home, your school, uh, your workplace, anywhere in your community? And it's a question that all of us have to ask ourselves because unfortunately, more are to come. And that's where CERT training, community, community emergency response team training, uh, becomes so important. Uh, here locally, over 1,200 residents in the Valley have already become certified in this training so that they're better prepared to, to help their families, uh, their friends, their neighbors. And it's training that I, I want to invite Brian Brennan from my staff to come up and talk more about. Um, Brian is our local CERT coordinator. Previously worked with Supervisor Bennett for many years and I have asked him to come on and join me. He's uh, just an incredible guy. Many of you probably already know him. But he's gonna tell you a little more about what CERT training entails uh, so that all of us can, can also be prepared like those 1,200 before us. Thank you, Matt. I'll just take a minute and again, those, um, on this, a huge shout out to Captain Steve Lazenby. Uh, retired uh, 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 firefighter out of Santa Paula and County Fire that actually put on the training and trained the majority of the people up here in the valley. It is a, it is a training that uh, lets you start at home. First of all, having a, what they call a, a go kit, something very similar to, to what uh, Mr. Vega talked about. Having, uh, understanding what your needs are in your own home. Uh, understanding how to turn off water, turn off the gas. Simple things like that. Um, it, and a checklist. And then also about how to not just be, uh, I guess, uh, be a, uh, a resource to your own family, but to maybe the neighbors right around you. And ideally, there's some uh, neighborhoods that have had two to three people on each block that are trained and can go out and assess the needs in the, in the neighborhood. We all know when a disaster strikes that things are prior prioritized. So uh, generally speaking, hospitals, um, convalescent homes where lots of people are, those are going to be where the first responders uh, need to react and, and, and generally will. They would love to be at your door helping you, but it can only be in one place at one time. So the reality is we have to start thinking about that ourselves. So the idea of turning off the gas, um, uh, making your home safe, and then being able to assess your neighbors, um, d are they okay? And if they're not, how do you get them help? And some of them, is th the training is basic uh, medical, basic triage, but also just also lifting, if, say a bookcase fell down on somebody or the roof caved in, and how to assess that. You don't want to just run in and think you're going to uh, uh, um, save somebody, and really then you're in trouble yourself. But I want to say it, it, with COVID and also W the program's uh, uh, has grown into an online program presently, and you can Google uh, just uh, just uh, sit uh, Ohio Valley Cert or o Ventura County Cert, and you'll be able to get to a page to register. I do want to just uh, uh, say that you can contact me at the uh, Supervisor Levere's office. It's Brian Brennan at Ventura.org. I will be able to coordinate you getting signed up online, but as importantly, when you go through that training, also to be able to get you together as a group when we can, to be able to work with fire extinguishers, the cribbing and learning how to lift things and do things safely in the right manner that we're not also becoming victims ourselves. So it's incredible training that needs to happen and I need to send a huge uh, shout out to the ACES, our amateur radio folks here that are a huge link in connecting the valley and connecting the folks that are on the ground in their neighborhoods. So go say hello to them and sign up and, uh, and get certified. Thank you, Brian. And this is, um, this is training that, that my team and I are all doing uh, in conjunction with uh, the, the cert, uh, certification. And I, I highly encourage all of you to join us. Um, if, you know, email Brian, email myself. We're happy to get the process started for you. Uh, but we all know Ojai is a beautiful place to live. And working together through cert, we can make it a safe place to live as well. So thank you for taking the initiative to be here today to, in person or watching uh, to, to, to want to be part of this effort. So thank you, and Mr. Vega, turn it back over to you.
Thank you, Supervisor LeVere. And uh, next, we will have a presentation from the Ventura County Sh uh, Sheriff's Department discussing fire prevention, VC alert, and their new high-low siren system for evacuations. And, uh, so if you could join me in thanking, or in welcoming Sergeant Cadman. <laughs> Hello, my name is Craig Cadman. I'm a sergeant with the Ventura County Sheriff's Office and a member of Ventura County. I just wanted to inform everyone of an application that the Sheriff's Office has, which is the VC Alert System, which you've heard about. It's a system that's used to uh, notify members of the community about impending danger or disasters in the area or alert them to emergencies in the community. You can register your home, your business address, landline cell phones, email addresses and TTY devices to receive emergency alerts in both Spanish and English. And we would encourage members of the community to do so. Uh, for anyone that's here, you can receive a brochure over at the sheriff's table that will inform you how to uh, join the system. And I would encourage for people in the community that aren't here at some point to come by the Ojai Police Station and pick up one of those brochures to receive more information on that and how to uh, join that program as well as we want to talk about a high-low siren, which we use uh, in disaster situations to warn uh, members of the community that are directly impacted in an emergency. And what we'd like to do is actually have the siren sound so you can tell what our new siren uh, that warns members of the community about the disaster sounds like. So that siren will be utilized in, in, in an emergency situation to address certain areas of the community. If you hear that siren coming throughout Ojai Valley, it's, it's another warning that, hey, there's a disaster coming and you need to take steps to prepare to evacuate the area. Uh, I'd also like to have other members of the Ventura County Sheriff's Office, such as our communications with the ACE team and other members of the search and rescue team come up at this time and also address different aspects that the Sheriff's Office does to help protect the community. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. I'm going to have the uh, members of the Ventura County Sheriff's Office Upper Ohio Search and Rescue Team come on up with me, guys. My name is uh, Deputy Jason Avelka. I'm a sheriff with the sheriff's office, and I'm also the deputy liaison for the Upper Ojai Search and Rescue Team. Um, we took, I want to take the opportunity to introduce you to these guys. These are the faces that you're going to see when there is an evacuation, and they're coming knocking on your door. So um, this is Roger, Justin, Graham, and Greg. So they are all volunteers. They're, one of, uh, they're four of 23 members on the team. It's a volunteer team that supports the sheriff's office. They're all highly trained, highly skilled rescuers. Um, the team has been, been around since 1951. And um, they're basically, they're, they do about 4,000 training hours every year to come out and support, they support lost hikers. Um, they help out with floods, with fire, whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have each one of them are gonna come up and give you a little bit of a briefing. Let's have uh, Roger come up first. Thank you, Jay. Um, so uh, we work for the sheriff, and uh, when the sheriff decides that it is time to evacuate an area or a zone, which is, by their calculation, is at virtually certain risk of some sort of trouble, usually by fire or flood, uh, they need, the sheriff needs to have people knock on every door in that zone to look someone face to face and say, it's time. Uh, we will be the last people in any official capacity that you may see until whatever is going on is over. So we, we, um, we are only called out when uh, it is deemed to be uh, a true emergency. And we will come and knock on your door, and we will say, we will introduce ourselves, and we will repeat uh, that the area that uh, we're working in is under a, 
an evacuation order. Um, and after that, uh, there will, you, one cannot count on any help whatsoever. Um, uh, we, we can provide telephone numbers or other ways for, to help people figure out where they might go um, if you don't have family and friends who will take you in. Uh, we, we, cannot, uh, we cannot load you into a truck and take you away. We'd love to, but I uh, can't do that. Uh, so my, my real message is, is uh, don't blow us off <laughs> because uh, <laughs> we, are, we are your last contact, perhaps, with uh, any sort of organ agency. The, the Spanish have a wonderful phrase for that, and it is sal si puedes, get out if you can. And uh, that's what we come to tell you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Justin. I've been on the team for about eight years, and I'm just going to talk about a couple of uh, instances where we got involved with uh, disasters. Um, everybody knows about the Thomas fire. Uh, I actually sat across uh, on the 150 and watched that fire when it just started, and uh, there weren't any fire engines or any first responders there, and I sat there with my kids just watching it for a while, and it was really windy. Um, Ended up deciding to get out of there when I saw traffic starting to build up. So I turned around and got out of town. And uh, by the time I got back to 126 in Santa Paula, I looked back and it had jumped the road where we were sitting there watching it. And uh, a couple of members of our team lost their homes that evening in the fire. But uh, we get called out. Uh, we got called out uh, once that fire started heading north to Santa Barbara. And we were going door to door asking people to leave and evacuate their homes. And uh, it was, when we got there, uh, it was like the whole city had a carpet of white ash on the ground. And I remember looking over uh, what I thought were tennis courts, thinking I was going to walk out on these tennis courts, and it ended up being a swimming pool that was covered in white ash. Um, but uh, we went door to door and, and tried to inform as many people as we could to get out. Um, and not too long after that, we were back in the same area for the Montecito uh, mudslides. And uh, we were up there. Unfortunately, that time we were there to remove people who, who had not survived. And we do a lot of that. Um, other times when there are heavy rains, we do patrols around rivers. Uh, and uh, we've all been, most of us have been trained. I think all of us here have been trained with uh, swift water uh, Swiftwater Rescue, and uh, I think uh, one of my buddies here is going to be talking a little bit about that, but most of the time when we get involved, it's to, to help get you guys evacuated, um, making sure nobody's getting close to the water when, when the water levels rise, and, and unfortunately after the fact, and when the, when the damage hits, we're there to try to help and you know, see, see what we can do. But I'm going to hand this over to my buddy uh, Graham. And Thank you. Hi, I'm Graham. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk briefly about um, the kind of mindfulness, the paying attention you can do before a VC alert comes through. And that's really basic stuff. But you know, when it gets into fire season, as fire season as long as it is and year round as it is now, pay attention to the weather. Look for windy days, look for hot days, look for low relative humidity. And uh, you know when you see that stuff starting to pop up regularly, really, really, really keep your car gassed up. It's super important. Um, paying attention to the weather, check in every now and again. If you see a big rainstorm no moving in, pay attention. Put gas in your car, charge yourself up, figure it out. Charge your spare cell phone battery, all of it. It's incredibly important, really, really small steps that you can do to keep yourself safe, keep your family safe, and keep uh, your situation in a very trying moment a, a little more straightforward. Um, <clears throat> along the same lines, uh, I'll say it again, cell phone battery. We all rely on our cell phones so frequently. So maybe get a spare battery, 
Maybe get one of those hand crank chargers. Maybe get some way of charging it. Make sure you have uh, the car adapter in your car and ready to go. Because when it happens, you're just going to want that phone. You're going to need that phone uh, for a whole bunch of things, such as uh, shelter locations, if need be, for the latest updates from verified sources. So that's the kind of stuff we really just want to prepare, prepare, prepare. Uh, these little, little things. More information you can get leading into it. Uh, the better off you'll be, the better off we'll be, the better off the community will be. Thank you, Greg. Well, good afternoon. My name is Greg, and I'm uh, here to talk uh, for a few moments about uh, swift water safety. So, whenever it rains in Southern California, we all forget how to drive. We forget what to do when, when the roads are wet and what happens with the, uh, with the rivers. So if you come to intersections, there are flooded parts of the roads that are flooded. Guess what? Just slow down. And if it looks like it's too, uh, too dangerous to, to pass, turn around and go back. It's, it's not worth getting yourself into trouble. And this includes uh, um, when the rains uh, cause the, uh, the, the, the rivers and the streams to flood. Uh, I know our, my first impulse is, you know, we have a little bit of water to go down to the Ventura River watershed and do some uh, boulder hopping and whatever, but you need to be aware that uh, when you get there, if that water looks high and it looks dangerous, it probably is too dangerous for you to go in. And uh, we forget about the power of water, but uh, it doesn't have to rise very much for it to uh, increase its uh, force against the body. So as the water rises, as the... Uh, cubic liters uh, increase in a stream or a river, uh, the, um, the force against the rocks and a body that it may be in the water increases exponentially. Just think about those times you've been at the beach and you've gone into, uh, into some waves and you really, even a small wave can, can exert a huge force. That's the same thing with rivers. So uh, um, avoid that if you can and just wait for the for the water to, to level to go down again. And um, again, if it looks like it's questionable, that probably is answering itself. And if I can just, for one moment, we're, we're heading into a long weekend where we're all going to want to be out on the trails and enjoying nature. And, and Ojai has so many wonderful trails. A couple of things to remember this weekend and every time you go out. Appropriate footwear. Appropriate hydration. Bring water. And uh, certainly if you go out at twilight or when it's starting to get dark, remember to bring a headlamp or a, uh, a flashlight with you. Um, if not, you may see somebody in an orange shirt coming to, coming to find you a little bit later. Thank you, Greg. We have uh, two uh, more speakers from the Sheriff's Department coming up right now. Good morning, folks. My name is Alex Elliott. This is John Cuthbert. We are volunteers with the Sheriff's Department's ACS, that is Auxiliary Communication Service. We're part of the Office of Emergency Services, and we provide ham radio or amateur radio communications when there's a disaster. One of the adages in amateur radio is when all communication fails, ham radio is there. John is going to discuss the resources that we have available here in the Valley. We have an emergency center at the PD, and we have other emergency centers set up around the valley with radio stations, solar powered, so in the event of a disaster and no power and no gas, they still function. John? Thank you, Alex. Yeah, the motto in our hobby is when all else fails, and I think we know with a fire or a flood or an earthquake, cell phones are going to go down, the internet's going to go down, maybe the power goes out. We have repeaters on just about every mountaintop in Ventura County. They're powered by batteries and solar panels, so they will tend to operate longer. They can get burned down also. But we have other resources we can communicate with point-to-point, uh, -point, direct. We have HF radio, VHF, UHF, microwave. And so we can provide communications when other systems don't work. We're under the auspices of the Sheriff's Department, so when they activate us, we go and man all the permanent stations at the, at the hospital, Somebody's calling me here. Uh, we have the uh, police station 
has a station there. We have one at the hospital, one at the ARC Center, and another in the Oakview Community Center. So we man all those stations. We have portable equipment in a box that we can take anywhere the Sheriff's Department sends us. For instance, if there is an evacuation and you have an emergency uh, a shelter over at Mordoff, we'll set up communication center over there so they won't be in the dark about what is going on. I've been in ham radio since 1957. Uh, ACS is a way to take what is a hobby of communicating with people and turn it into a public service. We do parades, we do marathons, bicycle races, all kinds of public events that provide communications which otherwise they would not have. There are 200 people um, that carry cards from the Sheriff's Department and uh, every Tuesday night we have a network. We test our communication skills, we make sure all the equipment's working. And we have more than 150 people check in every Tuesday night. Last year, we did 8,000 hours of public service and had 5,300 check-ins on the net. So we try to keep current and active. We, uh, we have a website, vccom.org, if you want to know what we do. Or if you're interested in amateur radio, we're happy to have new people. We get many people from the CERT program. When they take the CERT program, they realize how important communications are, and they get their ham radio license. Just imagine if the sheriff's department and the fire department went out on the road, jumped in their cars, and had no communication. It would be complete a disaster. So we can supplement that if necessary and are happy to do so. Uh, I don't know how effective this demonstration is going to be, but. Uh, this little radio here, I can communicate to, to repeater on Black Mountain, Red Mountain, or Sulphur Mountain. We have a man over at the uh, EOC, the Emergency Operations Center at the uh, police station. Jim, are you on frequency? N6XTJ AC6BR. I had it. I had it on the wrong repeater. Jim, are you on frequency? This is Jim, N6XTJ at the OIOC. Okay, that's just a simple demonstration. This signal went up to the top of Black Mountain, back down to the uh, police station, and then back up again. I could do the same thing with Sulphur Mountain or with Red Mountain. And uh, these are all solar-powered units and should survive. Uh, we survived the Thomas Fire uh, fine up on Black Mountain because we clear the brush all around every. So uh, I think that's about, uh, about all I can tell you about it. And uh, anybody would like a demonstration of it, I'll be around for a while and I can show you what our equipment can do. Thank you. Folks, you heard uh, about CERT earlier. CERT, people who are trained in CERT, which we all, all the radio amateurs are also, um, CERT operators or CERT trained personnel can become ham radio operators very easily. John and I and our friend Ray will be over at the sheriff's table. If anyone's interested, please come and ask us. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of good information and a lot of good tips there. I think. Um, People that were here for the Thomas Fire, and I know a lot of people have moved here since the Thomas Fire, but uh, at various times during the Thomas Fire, we had uh, power knocked out, we had cell phone towers go down, so uh, I think what we learned is you can't rely on just one source and know all the sources, and so the radio uh, at, uh, is one of those, and I, uh, I'll just point out our radio station is AM 1610, so anybody listening uh, can tune their car radio to that channel and have it on for the event of an emergency. Uh, with that, we have one more speaker, which is the Ventura County Fire Department, uh, presenting on Ready, Set, Go. So please join me in welcoming the Ventura County Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. Vega. Uh, my name is Scott DeTore. I'm with Ventura County Fire. Uh, I'm a retired fire captain that failed retirement and came back to help the county. And um, very honored and privileged to speak with here, you here today for a few moments about our Ready, Set, Go program. So just, I'm gonna date myself a little bit, but a quick show of hands. How many remember the movie Jerry Maguire? 
just to show a few. Does anybody remember, you know, all movies have famous, line, well, most movies have a famous line to catch on. Some movies have a famous, right, like make my day, right, that sort of thing. Anybody remember a line from Jerry Maguire? Say it again. Show me, the, remember this? He's on the phone, show me the money! Show me the money! Well, there was another line, it's in the locked room, and he's pleading with Cuba Gooding Jr. Help, help me help you! Help me help you! Well, that's what Ready, Set, Go is about. But it's not help me help you, okay? It's help us. Ventura County Fire and the Sheriff and certain everyone else. Help us help you, okay? Help us help you. When these disasters hit, it creates a tremendous drain on resources. We all know this. And as an example, I was just talking with Chief Romero, and to the best of our memory, when the Thomas fire hit, one of the first orders that came in for resources was approximately 50 strike teams, immediate need. 50 strike teams, let me put, you, put that in perspective for you. There's five Type 1 engines, which is what you, what you see behind me, in a strike team. And they were requested immediate need, and the fire service, what that means to the personnel is, wherever you are being sent, when you get there, the expectation is you will engage immediately. You will not be sent to staging. You will not be fed. There will be no break. When you arrive, you are going to work. So the initial request was 250 fire engines from the get-go. To put that in perspective, Ventura County, we now have 36 stations, 36 fire stations. Okay? And we, a lot of them have two engines, but the point is we have 36 Type 1 engines to go on a 24-hour basis, right, day to day. 36. When the Thomas fire hit, we had upstaffed a little bit. We had a few more, maybe 40 ready to go, right? We brought extra people in, and maybe even 45. I think we had two strike teams ready to go. So that gives us 46 engines, but the initial order was 250. Those engines have to come from somewhere, and they're coming from our neighbors to the north and our neighbors to the south, and the point is there is a delay. Resources do not get here in minutes. It takes sometimes hours for them to get there. So the point of Ready, Set, Go, again, is to help us help you. And one of the programs that Ventura County was a major factor in, I think one of the leaders in developing this nationwide program is Ready, Set, Go. And we have a brochures right over here. They look like, I'll show you the cover page, this. And it has a tremendous amount of information. And I'm briefly going to go over this. You'll be able to get one and read it. But the basic premise of Ready, Set, Go is almost like a track meet, right? You get down on the blocks, ready, set, you come up, and go, you take off. So what we would like you to do in Ready is get your home, get your business, right, your domicile, get it ready. And one of the biggest things you can do is your brush vegetation clearus. In this book, uh, brochure, it talks about the 30-foot and the 100-foot. Okay, we require a 100-foot clearance of combustibles. There's 30 foot and 100 foot. There are certain things we want you to do 30 feet from your house, and then there's additional things we want to do within the next 100. We would like you to harden your home. And these are things like be ready to cover vents, have a non-combustible roof. If you can, have non-combustible siding. You know, remove combustibles from the house. Do these things to help us. Okay, that's all part of ready. Have an evacuation plan, okay? Have more than one route. Have contact lists. Have a location to go to, preferably maybe one to the north and one to the south, because we don't know what's going to be blocked. Okay? Again, it's all in here, but if you can do these things, it helps us to help you. When you harden your home, when you do these clearances, okay, it buys us time. And that's the one commodity that we typically don't have in these disasters when these wildfires hit. Time is very precious for us. So the more time you can give us, to protect your home, the better chance we have of saving your home. And the time to prepare is not, when you hear on the news that the Santa Ana's are coming, the time to prepare is now. Survey your home. See what you can do to harden your home against fire. Give us the opportunity, give us the chance with that defensible space, that's what we refer to it as, to save your home. Okay. If homes are well prepared, a single engine can protect several homes. Because understand with the way fire behaves, no fire starts big. Homes do not 
com you know, spontaneous combust all at once. It usually starts with a single ember, maybe no bigger than a thumbnail, that gets lodged into a vent or under a floor or under a deck. Single embers, a lot of times, is what starts a home. So these fires start small. If your home is well protected, if it's hardened, that fire starts small. A single engine can actually protect several homes because a lot of times they don't need to pull the whole fire hose. They can just go with a two and a half gallon extinguisher and put out that little tiny fire. And they can cover several homes with one engine. But we need you to help us to help you by hardening your home. Okay? Again, that's all in here. So that's part of the ready. The get set is, oh, I'm sorry, another part of the ready, moving back up just a bit, is, and it talks about in here, make lists of things that you need to go with you. Your medications, having water, your family valuables, right? The things that are important to you. For a lot of people now, it's your computer, because you store so many things on your computer, okay? Photo albums, those sort of things that are irreplaceable to you. Have a list of them, know where they are, okay? So if the time comes, okay, you're ready to go, okay? Under the get set, that's where you would now start gathering all those things to your vehicle. All right, get them ready to go. Do any final checks on the outside of the house. Make sure combustibles are away, okay? Vents are covered, right, if you can. Again, you could do that part of the ready before a fire even gets close, okay? And then when go comes, go. We strongly encourage you when the volunteers, they've moved on, our sheriffs and our deputies and everyone else, when they show up and they are knocking on that door and they are urging you and encouraging you or advising you there's an evacuation going on, don't wait. Don't wait. Leave as soon as you can, okay? Not in a panic because you're not going to be panicked because you're prepared, right? You're going to be prepared, but that's, you'll get everything loaded. You'll make all the phone calls you need to make. Make sure everyone's on the same page. You know which evacuation route you're going to take and you know where you're going to meet. Okay. And when I say make the phone calls, it's again one of the things we talk about in our brochure. Have a contact that's outside the area. Because the power may go down here, but you may be able to reach someone on the outside. So that way all your family members has a point of contact and you can all check in with each other. Okay. So in a nut nutshell, that's really Ready, Set, Go is all about. For you to help us so we can help you. Okay. The time to do it is now. Okay. Don't wait for the rain to start. Don't wait for the wind to start. Be ready to go now. With that, I thank you for your time, and I'd like to bring to the microphone Chief Anthony Romero. All right. Almost down to the final hour, right? So what I wanted to kind of cap this off with from Ventura County Fire Department and every other elected official, constituent, um, and all of our community members here is you've all taken an opportunity to take an interest in your own personal safety and preparedness during a disaster. So Mayor Sticks, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak. Supervisor Levere, I really do appreciate you seeing you out here. And then uh, Manager Vega, uh, you are taking an interest in your community. Now let's think about this for a minute. The legacy is not necessarily what you leave behind, but it's the people you affect. And I want to cap off on people. You guys are it. We depend on you, just like Captain DeTore said, to help us help you and we want to give you the tools. Today is just the touchstone of what we wanted to do to give you the tools to get you prepared and know what to do in times of emergency. This is just the start. The resources that are here available to you, VC Alert, VenturaCountyFireDepartment.org, Ventura County Sheriffs, online are going to be tons of resources available to you or at your brick and mortar fire station or brick and mortar police station. We're still there. So one thing I wanted to reach out to you about is we are very much a part of your community and we're never going to lose sight of that. And I'm going to lastly leave you with this. In the fire service, we talk about keeping it simple. And it's just this simple. Do everything we can to protect lives and property. And you guys are very much a part of that. So hopefully you got some wonderful tools here today. I do appreciate the opportunity. And remember, we're always in your community. So we're just one, either a, a walk, a phone call, not 911, a walk or a phone call away uh, in order to help you uh, be prepared to do good uh, during times of disaster. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you to everybody. We appreciate it. And Supervisor, Be or excuse me, Manager Vega, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, everybody. So that, that will be the end of our presentations today, but we are hoping that people will join us and visit uh, some of the tables we have set up to get more information on, the, on each of these. 
And uh, before we do wrap up, I want to thank uh, the, the partners that spoke, but also a couple that, that uh, are not presenting, such as the Humane Society, who has a booth. And I think, importantly, with uh, the Humane Society, uh, one thing they want to remind people about is to be prepared for your pets as well. I think during the emergency, we all saw people trying to evacuate horses. Um, uh, uh, I was evacuating a pig during the Thomas fire. So uh, be prepared and, and uh, be ready to evacuate your animals as well. And then also the crew, the Concerned uh, Resources and Environmental Workers who always helps uh, and is currently helping us on a project that will also actually have some fire prevention, which is also another key that we're working on to be prepared. So, uh, so with that, uh, come visit each of us, and thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you.